Hey everyone, and welcome to this lesson. Today, we're going to be learning how to solve simple quadratic equations. So, we'll start with what quadratic equations actually are, and then we'll see how to solve quadratic equations of the form ax squared equals c, and ax squared plus bx equals zero. Let's jump into this. First, what are quadratic equations? Well, quadratic equations are equations where the highest power of a variable is two, some examples of quadratic equations include 5x squared plus x plus 1 equals 0 and 3 plus m squared equals 13 because the highest power of the variable in each equation is 2. On the other hand, 4x squared plus 5x cubed equals 2 is not a quadratic equation. Even though the equation contains an x squared term, the highest power of the variable is 3. 9m plus 6 equals 3 is also not a quadratic equation because the highest power of the variable is 1. So now that we know how to spot a quadratic equation, let's see how we would go about solving them. As we'll come to see, quadratics are found in many different forms, and the way that we solve them will depend on the form that it's in. So let's start by seeing how we would solve a quadratic in the form ax squared equals c. Here, a could not be equal to 0, because if a was 0, then the whole left-hand side would become zero and we wouldn't have an x squared term anymore. As we know, if we remove the x squared term, then this is no longer a quadratic equation. So here, a and c are any real numbers, where a is not equal to zero and x can be any variable. Let's take the quadratic 2x squared equals 11 to have an example to apply the steps to solving these types of quadratics to. The first step is to make x squared the subject. To do this, we'll divide the equation by 2, leaving us with x squared equals 5.5. Next, we take the square root of both sides. This cancels out the power of 2 on the left, and on the right we have the square root of 5.5. Now, when we take the square root of a number, we need to write a plus minus sign out the front like so. This is because the square root of 5.5 can be either positive or negative. So now we find our solutions. x equals the positive square root of 5.5 or the negative square root of 5.5. These answers are in what we call exact form. That is, they're not rounded off in any way. If we were asked to express our answers in decimal approximations, then we would plug these roots into our calculators to find that they are approximately equal to 2.345 and negative 2.345. To three decimal places. So now that we have our solutions, which one does x equal? Well, we don't know. We have two solutions. And we didn't just happen to find two solutions in this particular example. Whenever we're dealing with quadratic equations, it's possible to find two solutions because of the squared variable. Let's use these steps to solve another quadratic. 5x squared equals negative 10. First, we want to make x squared the subject. So we divide the equation by five. Now we need to take the square root of both sides, giving us x equals plus minus the square root of negative two. Finally, we solve to find our solutions. But here, we can't solve this equation because we can't take the square root of a negative number. So when x squared equals some negative number, we end up with no real solutions to the quadratic. Now that we know how to use these steps to solve quadratics of the form ax squared equals c, let's take a look at solving quadratics of the form ax squared plus bx equals zero. Again, let's use an example to have something to apply the steps we developed to. Let's take the quadratic 8x squared equals x. Initially, this may not look as though it's in the form ax squared plus bx equals zero, so the first step is to rearrange the equation so it's in this form. Now, it may be tempting to divide the whole equation by x to get rid of the square and the x term, but this is a really common mistake to make. We actually can't simplify this equation by dividing by x. This is because, as we learnt, quadratic equations can have two solutions. And if we divide by x, then we're actually not going to find one of the solutions we're after. So instead, we take x out as a factor on the left hand side. And now we use what's called the null factor law. In its most general form, the null factor law 
says that if the product of any two factors is zero, then one or both factors must be zero. Applying this logic to our equation, we have two expressions that multiply together to equal zero. This means that at least one of the expressions must equal zero. So, either x could equal zero, or 8x minus 1 could equal 0. Now we simplify the remaining expressions to find our solutions. So we end up with x equals 0 or 1 8th. Great! To recap, these are the steps we use to solve quadratic equations of the form ax squared plus bx equals 0. Remember, do not divide the equation by x or you won't find one of your solutions. With that, let's summarise this lesson. First, we learned that quadratic equations are equations where the highest power of a variable is 2. To solve quadratics of the form ax squared equals c, we make x squared the subject, take the square root of both sides, remembering to include the plus minus sign, and simplify to find the two solutions. To solve quadratics of the form ax squared plus bx equals 0, we rearrange the quadratic to this form if necessary, before taking x out as a factor of the left hand side. Then we apply the null factor law and simplify the two equations that we're left with to find the solutions. Remember, don't divide the equation by x to simplify. That brings us to the end of this lesson. See you for the next one.